Welcome to our presentation of the Pocket Trainer app, an app that's about staying active. This is designed by Team 5, including Jordan Doherty, Greg McQueen, and Michael Principe. Uh, in our research, uh, we found that to help maintain people's levels of health and possibly improve it in some cases, that 150 minutes of moderate intensity activity or 75 minutes of vigorous intensity uh, aerobic activity weekly was recommended. In our interviews, people recognize the importance of staying active, and our interviewees also felt better when they were on a consistent workout routine. Something interesting that when we think about working out being fun or something that you want to do, all of our interviewees recognize working out is not fun. A video that we also researched recommended or suggested rather that if you're working out as fun, you're not working out, you're not doing it right. So our problem definition was to construct a fitness app with a consideration for the needs of varying age groups with respect to being and staying active while addressing several questions related to motivation. We wanted to figure out how we could encourage people when they either aren't sure what to do or how to motivate them when they just aren't feeling it and it's time to work out and they just can't get there. And how can we make it easier to, to get that mental state to be on and stay with it? And how can we make that routine easier? We also wanted to ask the question of how can we make the manual process of logging or setting up a workout smoother, simpler, quicker? A lot of people want to track what they do or set up a routine to follow. And how could we help with that? So in our ideation phase, uh, we did a, a day in the life uh, of our persona. And from that, we kind of got this idea of notifications for motivation. And basically that was just simply things like uh, the night before a scheduled workout, uh, remember to pack your bag and then the day of pack a lunch and, and things of that nature. And we also came up with the idea of vocally building a workout. And this is kind of that idea that the app began to focus around this talk to the trainer feature. What this would be is instead of scrolling through a, multiple scrolls of a database of workouts, you would simply tap a microphone talk to the trainer and say, hey, I'm going to do push-ups today, or I want to do three sets of a bench press. In our gamification idea, we wanted to reduce the monotony of working out. How can we make it fun to kind of cut out that boring aspect? And within that, we want to be able to draw the user back to the app, whether it's for points or bragging rights or something of that nature. And additionally, we wanted to have a virtual avatar to grow fit with the user. So if based on the user profile, you have height, you have size due to weight, and you have a type of shape of avatar maybe that the user creates, it slims down, it bulks up, it muscles up as the user does as they progress. In our convergence ideation, we wanted to provide data to the personal physician for potential feedback. So the convergence idea of connecting to something outside of the app and sending information to a physician, a physician can kind of use get activity in that information to possibly help diagnose an issue or see how uh, a patient is living healthy or not. We also wanted to use this to provide data to health insurance uh, plans to verify health screenings, which would decrease rate plans if you're following certain steps based on the insurance program you're in. We also wanted to help the user see their daily progress through wearables to help motivate them. So if they have a step tracker or uh, something that will count calories or anything of that nature, additional data to help the user stay motivated is where we want it to go. So next we'll have the prototype. 
And in this prototype, we had two scenarios. In the first scenario, Steve arrives at the gym, and Steve is our persona, and he's feeling getting there today was an achievement. And he didn't prepare a routine, but he came with a plan that he knows he wants to work on his arms, his chest, and his back. So he's going he's gonna to open up his app, and he's going to see this, this greeting and say, hey, what are we doing today? And so he's going to create a workout. And instead of, like we said earlier, scrolling through the multiple exercises and whatnot, he's going to talk to the trainer. So he taps that. And the app will ask him, what do you want to do? So Steve taps the microphone and says, bench press. And the app brings up the bench press. It gives him a picture and a description. And the app says, great. How many sets do you want to do? And it recognizes he's done this before. Uh, Steve's used, has had this app for a while. And last time he did three. So Steve says, three. And throws up three sets on the screen. So Steve knows it's a confirmation. The app says, excellent. How many reps per set? Last time you did 10. Steve taps the microphone and says 10. And that fills it in. And, All right, you're, 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 you're making progress, Steve. So how many weights, how much weight, sorry, per rep? Last time you did 140. And the last time Steve did really well with 140. He got to 10. He wasn't feeling too exhausted. So this time he says 150. And at the end, he sees... Okay, he's. I've added this app to your workout, the app says. Bench press of three sets of 10 reps each at 150 pounds. Steve wants to see his list. So he says, let's look at the workout. He's got this workout scenario. Uh, you know, the first exercise is a bench press. So, and then he would tap go to move on to his workout. In the second scenario we tested, um, Steve wants to set some reminders to keep him on track with his workout. So he opens his pocket trainer app to organize the schedule, and he goes to the profile settings, and he looks for the reminders, taps the reminders, and he wants to make sure a, uh, an excuse that actually one of our interviewees mentioned that sometimes they forget their workout gear. So Steve doesn't want to be that and not have an, or have an excuse not to go to the gym. So he taps workout gear. And so he wants to switch this reminder on and he wants to know how often he wants to get this reminder. So Steve thinks, I need this reminder to happen every time that I want to work out. And I only work out Monday through Friday. So he's going to tap the repeat function. And he's going to say, you know what? For every workout day that's going to be a weekday, I want to select that. So the app selects it, and then he says, he goes back to details, and he sees, oh, okay, that's good. I want to select done. And now Steve has a reminder set of workout gear for days that will precede a workout day, which will be Sunday through Thursday because Steve only works out Monday through Friday. In our prototype testing, um, we created a testing packet and we, we put in a description of the app, an explanation of what they could expect to see and why. And we put our problem description in there. We uh, included some testing scenarios in the, in the testing packet with a link to the survey. Then we finalized it as a PDF. So in the event that we weren't able to sit with our testers, we could send them a PDF and they would be able to run the test. Additionally, we also created a survey, which is our usability survey, to attempt to collect data back from our testers that would help us in future iterations. Next, we executed the tests. Um, in some cases, we were with the tester. In other cases, we emailed a PDF and had them open it with the instructions and walk through the test. In our testing analysis, the feature that was the foundational piece for the app, the talk to the trainer feature, tested very well. 100% of our testers found it more than useful to very useful. 
than our reminders feature. Uh, 43% thought it was very useful. 29% thought it was useful or slightly more than useful. And then as in terms of the app being recommended to a friend, 100% of our testers said they would recommend this app to a friend based on the two features that we had, the talk to the trainer feature and the reminders. And 71% of those testers rated the app as five, which is the highest rating. Additionally, the talk to the, with the talk to the trainer feature, testers found that being able to verbally ask questions of the app would be beneficial to beginners. We want to be able to allow beginners who may not know what to do to ask the app or talk to the trainer about what to do and what it would recommend. Testers also reported that the layout of the app was clean and neat and simple. Uh, and this was reported multiple times about how it was easy to follow and a very clean looking app. The talk to the trainer feature was more highly ranked, but when asked about the features, reminders came up more often in terms of motivation. Again, people talking about the reminders such as the workout gear happening the night before workout that eliminates that excuse that when you go to the gym to work out, you still have your gear as opposed to you forgot to bring your clothes or you forgot to get a snack or other options that we offer in the reminder section. For reflection, what we would keep in, this, uh, in, in future iterations would be that talk to the trainer feature. This is setting up workouts and for people who don't necessarily know what to do because they're a beginner. And we would also keep the feature of reminders. Again, they eliminate excuses. Uh, the reminders can be expanded to hydrate during the day before a workout or on the day of a workout rather. And the layout is something we would keep as this tested very well for being clean and simple. What we would change is the mic icon was a comment that we got from a tester. Uh, this might need to be centered or um, maybe more obvious. Our, our feedback was such that the mic icon didn't seem appropriate as low, it was, as low as it was in the app. We also would change having some pre-made routines in the workout section for our testers to go through and look at to determine is this an appropriate level or is this a, a feature that they could experience that would encourage them to be active. Additionally, we would make available a list of exercises for various levels. And we would also want to add or change the reminder uh, about proteins or taking vitamins on the day of, of workouts. For what we would eliminate, we wouldn't really eliminate anything at this stage. One tester did find that the talk to the trainer probably wasn't something that they would use, but they could really see the value in in it for others who may not know what to do or who would have questions. Uh, what we would add is we would add helpful hints and instructions. Some of our testers were confused by the mid fertility concept and maybe like a graphical eye with a circle around it next to apps to indicate, I'm sorry, next to features to indicate that there's info or there's help on this particular screen. And this would help us eliminate any kind of confusion about what to expect in a prototype if someone thought there was a bug and they hit the info button maybe the info would say this is just a prototype you would should expect abc in the real live app this would be hey this is where you set the reminders for a weekly or a daily uh, time to remember your workout gear in reflecting about design thinking, uh, what we essentially went through with our team is we learned it's all about the user, obviously in the empathy stage. This is a process that doesn't stop with just talking to the users. It continues throughout the entire process. As far as the definition stage, you know, we see a problem as, as engineers and computer science people, we come up with solutions but it isn't necessarily something that's useful to the user. 
the user centered definition is different when you focus on the highlights and the insights from talking to people and gathering information about how we can help them. For our ideate stage, any ideas are good. And we talked about shooting for the moon. What is what is that moon shot that, you know, it's don't think about what's current, think about what could be, and just go for it. Be ready to ditch ideas uh, if the users feel they don't address their concerns. And that those ideas, it's not personal if, if a user doesn't accept those ideas. It's not about the idea, or I'm sorry, it's not about you, the developer, it's about the idea. In the prototyping stage, we know an engineer can build anything, but if we don't keep the user in mind, we don't get that valuable feedback needed to move to the next iteration. What that simply means for us is we learned in our testing that if we don't focus on what they want, we'll just keep getting back, no, that's not it. No, this isn't helpful. And then we're stuck in this circle of going back and forth uh, with prototypes that aren't helpful. But if we empathize and always keep the user in mind, we'll build better prototypes. Finally, in our testing phase, something that we learned that if we went back, we I know we would definitely change is asking the right types of questions during the test. A lot of our questions in our qualitative questions, uh, they shouldn't be answered with us be able to be answered with a simple yes or no. We want that wealth of information that the user has to guide our next iteration. We need to ask the right types of questions to get that information instead of something that just says, did you like it? Yes. Did you like it? No. Or what did you like most about? Thank you for listening and we appreciate your time.